Hello. With a to the point tutorial. This is the applied energistics tutorial. Uh, we're going to talk about how to get your ground basic ME system up. So the first thing you need to know is that this is an applied energistics to meteor. The meteor responds in the world as you explore. It's made out of very hard material, so you need a good pick to mine it. Uh, but when you mine the meteor, you are going to end up with... Oh, I'm missing my hammer. Uh, you're going to end up with a chest in the middle. And the chest... Right there. You got it from the top? Okay, great. Yep. In the, in the middle is a chest, and it's called a skystone chest. You open it up, and inside are presses. So we got really lucky. This is a logic press, a silicon press, and a calculation press. That's three out of the four presses you'll need. You'll also need some of this sky stone to build some stuff with as well. So what do we do with the presses? So the presses are used to make different parts for your ME system. Without those, you don't have an ME system. So find those sky stone chests or bum some off a buddy who can make the copies for you, and you can get started. So let's get started. So, first thing we have to do is, after we find all the presses, which are, we have silicon, calculation, and logic. Oh, meteor in the background. Boom! So what's the fourth press there, Dram? We have... Which of the three we got? We have calculation, silicon, and inscriber. Logic. Logic press. Yep. Logic. You got calculation, engineering. Engineering is the one we're missing. So, so you need four four presses. That is calculation, logic, silicon, and engineering. Once you have those four presses, you are good to go. So what's the first step here? First step after that would be to go locate some charged Certus quartz. I usually recommend getting about sixteen if you can, but you can do it with one. You can make your own though. What you'll do is you'll take that charged Certus Quartz, throw it in a pool of water with Nether Quartz and Redstone. No, that's any pool of water, right? Not this. This any one's pool just. Of water. This one just happens this to be just... pimped out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on though. The, the charger's then, not on. You don't have to have the charger on for that. Mhm. Mm It'll automatically any pool of water. Like I can use this pool of water over here, and it will turn it into the Fluix crystals. Okay, I'm so making a mess down there now. <laughs> then once you have a fluidix crystals, what do you do with those? You can take the fluidix crystals. You'll for each of them that you throw down there, you'll get two fluidix crystals. With the fluidix crystals, you'll take and turn them into a charger. And then you can take regular Certus quartz and put it in the charger when you have power to it, like I have at this one, and it'll make you your charged Certus quartz. And the charger doesn't have an interface. You just literally put the crystal in and it charges, right? Correct. Here, I'll turn it on. Okay, so we've got a normal a normal Certus Quartz. We stick it in the charger and wait for lightning. And then it turns to charged. Let the lightning happen. Great. So we've got charged Certus Quartz either from mining or by charging it with the charger. Now what do we do? Okay, what I usually do is I take and make the crystal growth accelerators because when you're making your ME system, you're going to need a lot of the regular um, Certus Quartz, the pure Certus Quartz. And with that, what you do is you take, you grind regular Certus Quartz down with either a grindstone or with pulverizer, which is what I usually use, is the pulverizer. You combine that with sand and it'll make the Certus Quartz seeds. And then you toss them into a pool of water and if you do not have the crystal growth accelerators, it'll take a regular day, not a Minecraft day, but like a regular day just for them to grow. But with uh, the, all four crystal growth accelerators, it takes about three to four minutes. That's a big difference. Yeah. And the other problem with having them in the pool is if you have them in your base, someone walks by with magnetic armor or something, they go, and your seeds aren't in there anymore. Yep. Mm hmm. But one good note about that is, is if they do get jumped out of the water or you jump in, check just to check on them when they come out, they do not go back. They they will keep their growth acceleration. And they don't despawn, do they? 
Nope, they do not. So we combine a sand and a sortus quartz dust, and we have seeds. And you can see the progress on them by mousing over. It says 0%. This item will not despawn. Now, if we put that in a pool of water, they are sitting there, and they're maybe thinking about doing something, and then we grab them, because and they're off. still 0%. So what we do is instead of waiting all day, is we turn these magic growth accelerators on. You can tell that they're turned on because they turn purple, and they sometimes have the nice little lightning effect around them. Mm -hmm. So we put those in for about the same amount of time that was zero before, and now it's 10%. So how about that? So crystal growth highly, accelerators, the way to go. I highly recommend using the toggle buses. That way you can turn them off so you're not wasting all your power. A toggle bus it, being this thing right there that you're standing on. Yep. I use them on the inscriber and the um, charger too, because even though they're not doing anything, they'll still tick down and use your energy. So this is going to suck a lot of juice, and then also, you said the inscriber here sucks a lot of juice. And what was the yes. third thing? The charger. The charger. So they will sit there and suck power off your network without you doing anything. So it's a really good idea, like you said, to have a toggle bus on that with a lever to shut them off. Okay, now what? We've got charged crystals. We've got grown pure crystals. What do we do now? You'll okay. use your inscriber to make your different um, processors. Okay, so this is an inscriber. It looks a little funny because it's got it's got all kinds of stuff automating it. But I, uh, I use the item conduits from Ender.io to pull from the chest to, for like the top portion for your presses or after you get your top half of your logic your processor's done, that'll go in the top. Your silicone will go into the bottom and the redstone comes in from the side. And that's how it makes it nice and easy to automate. And you can put um, acceleration cards in there to make it a lot faster as well. Acceleration cards go into the inscriber? Aha, uh -huh, on the right side. Yes, on the acceleration right Acceleration cards. Okay, so on we're, we're facing the inscriber right now. The left side is what? Left hand side is where you would put like your redstone or like right now I've got a silicone press in. I would take like a stack of silicone or whatever and put it in the left hand side chest and it'll automatically feed it and then the other item conduit on this side will pull it out and put it in the chest. It makes it a lot easier too. You can also do it with an ME system. I've just not got to that stage yet. Okay, so we're making silicone, printed silicone, with the silicon press. So basically it's coming down and smashing the silicone. Now, silicone, the easy, if you have Ender IO, sag mill sand, great way to get silicone. If you don't have Ender IO, trade villagers. And if you don't have, you're not going to trade villagers, and what's the long process, Drem? <laughs> That's pretty much what I know. Okay, so there's a long process. In that. Um, uh, actually, in some of the packs, what you do is you'll take your um, Certus Quartz Dust or Nether Quartz Dust, and you will cook it in the furnace, and it'll give you a silicone. Yep, that's the long process. So you burn up a lot of your quartz making silicone. But if you've got Ender IO, you can just... Uh, Ender IO silicone will work. All right, so now that we've got some automation going on our inscriber, now you can use hoppers if you're earlier game and you don't have conduits. You're just going to put hoppers against here, right? Uh, you will only be able to do two sides because if you try to put another hop, you can't put a hopper on the bottom. Okay. You'll still have to have a conduit. All right. For the bottom, but you can sit there and do it one at a time. Good. So that's how we make our silicone. And then for the other halves of your processors, let me see, you will take in like the logic processor. I've got one in my inventory. Okay, it's in. Okay. I'm trying to remember if that one's... Yep, you put gold in there and that will give you the top half of the logic processor. And then your um, calculation processor would be diamonds. I think right, but nope, that's wrong. 
Scriber Calculation Press. Engineering. Engineering is diamonds. Aha, the one I don't uh, have. Calculation would be the pure certus. Okay. I have a wireless ME here. Keep forgetting I have it. So because those crystals are accelerated, they should be finished. Let's take a look. There we go. Pure Certus Quartz Crystal. Alright, so that's how we use the Inscriber to make various things. So when you're looking at any eye and it tells you to build something, that is how you do it. You use the Inscriber and you can automate it or stick stuff in manually one at a time. It's up to you. So now we've got all these presses, all these different um, diamond and different objects we've made through the in Inscriber. One of the nice things to know about the ME system with AE2 is you don't need a controller to begin with. To begin with, you just build the drive and your terminal and your energy acceptor, correct? That is correct. So with an energy acceptor, a drive, and a terminal, you have an ME system. The controller only comes in later when you need more channels. Because AE2 is div divided into channels. Basically, you have a limit on how many things you can connect to your system before you have to add controllers. And if you need lots of channels, you just have stack a whole bunch of controllers together, and it will add a bunch of channels. Now, <clears throat> that's a topic for another video. This video is all about how to get your ME system up and running, and that is it. You need an ME drive, a crafting terminal, or a normal terminal, access terminal, and an energy acceptor attached to whatever power you have. You know, Or you could use a um, vibration chamber and burn some coal, and you'll have an ME system before you know it. Anything else I need there, Dram? Not that I can think of. Awesome. Well, enjoy your game, guys. Thanks you for watching, and we'll see you for another To The Point tutorial.